So hi, Cara. Um, thank you hi, so Kate. much for meeting me today. You're great to do it. Oh, thanks. So delighted to be here. Thanks no for having problem. me. And I just contact you, I suppose, because I know you're so passionate about personalised nutrition and functional approaches to health. And I thought that for today, this would be a great team for our viewers to go through with us. And I suppose Brilliant. based on this, I just have a few questions for you, if that's OK. Yeah, yeah, work away. OK, so I suppose my first question for you would be when it comes to nutritional therapy, what is your approach to helping others? Um, okay, so like I suppose the definition of nutritional therapy is like a personalized approach to maximizing your health through individual diet and lifestyle changes. It's very much about that, you know, there's no one size fits all approach because we're also biochemically individual. So it really has to, like up for me, I have that sit down with the person for at least an hour where we go through the specific case for them and their lifestyle and that. And it really has to be personalized plan for them because what will suit me won't suit you you know yeah. and then I suppose me personally I suppose what I always try to do is to make it just simple for people practical you know realize that everyone has a busy life and like in turn people really just want to know just tell me what what do I eat you know break it down for me so I just yeah. try to do that and make meals you know tasty but quick and easy and things like that so it kind of fit into your lifestyle and you might get someone then with like shift work or something like that so yeah. you really have to tailor it to them you know yeah um yeah 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 I totally agree with that and I think that is a good method for you know individualizing plans because otherwise it's not a one-size-fits-all really is it yeah. And um, I guess moving on from that, I suppose when it comes to health journeys, a lot of people starting off, I suppose, would find it quite um, daunting, you know, so I thought it might be nice for our viewers to break it down for them. So would you be able to describe like some maybe some simple lifestyle changes some people can make to improve their health? Oh, yeah, no worries. That's, I suppose I'm all about that, just giving people like a few small things to start with, you know, mm -hmm. and really letting them see that small changes made consistently can really add up to like a huge transformation over mm -hmm. time, you know. So like if you did one new healthy thing every day, a tiny thing, drink more water, you know, have an extra glass of water or eat more veg. Literally, if you did that every day and kept them all going, could you imagine the change you'd have created over a year, you know? Mm -hmm. So I always just pick easy things like that, tell people like eat half a plate of veg, literally if that if all you did was go away and double your veg you'd see improvements in like a week or two you know drink more water just get in more movement have more downtime you know everyone is just living such busy lives literally yeah. taking a proper like chunk of time that might only be 15 minutes to actually sit down and eat your meal you know mm -hmm. not eating on the run or in a distracted state yeah. or just simple little tips like mm -hmm. eat a rainbow you know so when you see your plate you see colorful foods on it the fruit and veg and that just means you're getting in more plant foods you know so you're really going to be getting that kind of life force energy like from your foods but um even yeah a lot of people maybe have to focus on dieting or losing weight so I think like a slight mindset shift there on more eating for a healthy gut mm -hmm. or eating to reduce inflammation that they can be kind of easy ideas to have in your head that create a much more positive approach to healthy eating you know yeah and I suppose nourishing your body it's all about mental health as well not just about physical health so I yeah. was hoping would you be able to describe how nourishment can improve a person's mental health Oh, yeah, this is an area I'm very passionate about. I do work with um, the silly heads. Do you know them? They're great um, on promoting mental health. Yeah. But they've had loads of information and great blogs on this mm -hmm. sort of topic. But I've had, you know, struggles myself in the past with like um, anxiety and panic attacks and stuff. And so saw how your diet and lifestyle, you know, improvements can make such a difference. So, I mean, the main ways that our food would impact our mental health would be like through, you know, specific nutrients. So like if you're not getting the whole spectrum of nutrients, maybe you're like deficient in some things that could be causing you issues. But also like there's a huge gut brain connection, you know, so really yeah. feeding a healthy gut. Um, and then you have like, you know, the hormonal aspect of mood and that. So like your blood sugar would be very much impacting there if you're on that kind of blood sugar roller coaster. So just trying to balance that out. Um, 
and then like in, maybe inflammation just focusing on getting in as many anti-inflammatory foods as possible just to reduce inflammation and that can also impact um, your mental health you know but you'd be amazed little daily things like sugar caffeine things like that can really be having an impact mm -hmm. on your mood so it's worth just getting some personalized advice you know if you're struggling in that area there's yeah. a lot you can do yeah, that's very true because I feel like a lot of people now, sugar and coffee and things like that, is just ingrained into our daily routines almost. So. Yeah, and it's amazing. Yeah. People don't make the connection, you know, but yeah, like caffeine don't. totally yeah. impacts yeah. our adrenals yeah. and it really kind of yeah. pushes you further into that blood sugar roller coaster, which is yeah. going to affect like your sleep, your mood, you know, everything. So yeah. it can cause a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. It's very interesting, really, because, you know, it's one of those things people, it's just second nature drinking a cup of coffee in the morning now for a lot of yeah. people so Karen when your blogs on your website you mentioned that the way we eat is as is as important as what we eat and I thought that was just a very yeah. interesting um like observer would you be able to expand on this further for us yeah and it's you know it's a huge area at our topic like to be honest we could go on all day about it but it is interesting it probably brings people into thinking about things they don't normally think about just mm -hmm. like we're on about you know this mm -hmm. kind of mindless drinking of coffee or mm -hmm. you know somebody might be having five cups of coffee a day and adding three teaspoons of sugar and it's just mm -hmm. that it's the habit so they don't even question it but it could be totally affecting their health you know mm -hmm. but I suppose that blog the idea of it started with um you know, the way we eat as in the physical way we eat. So like chewing your food enough, because that's I'd have to ask every client that do you eat quite quickly or do you chew yeah. your food? But, you know, slowing down your eating is massive because if we eat too quickly. It's, you know, it's a huge part of our digestion. So it's going to really impact on you not digesting efficiently and then causing gut issues over time. Mm -hmm. So it started with that, but really it expands out into lots of areas like, um, you know, not eating on the run, people eating in the car, in front of their computer, yeah. So like that all um, feeds into like, you know, fight or flight state. You don't want to be eating in that state. You want to be eating in rest and digest state, you know. So it can be as simple as just like I said, carving out a meal time or even just sitting down, taking a few deep breaths, really just trying to switch over the nervous system into a calmer state before eating. And then you'll digest a lot better. But um, even the whole kind of tradition around meal times and eating, you know, it's like, taking time to shop or you know to maybe get some locally produced veg or even growing your own and then it's amazing like in the cooking of food you know if you're cooking up your garlic or your ginger or whatever like even at that stage your digestion is starting you know because the smells and all that are you know that's your kind of cephalic digestion so digestive juices are all already flowing at that stage so it's like about taking time you know to cook and to have your meal and even eating with other people you know like family meal time is kind of a thing of the past nearly mm -hmm. but it's that like eating with family or friends also because it'll relax you is going to mm -hmm. feed into that more eating in a more relaxed state you know so mm -hmm. it's just the whole trying just to make more time for your meals and nourishing mm -hmm. food and that yeah I think that's so interesting you've definitely opened my eyes anyway <laughs> to looking into my eating habits and things like that so thank you so so much for joining oh, us oh no today. problem oh thanks for having me Kate delighted no to be here no problem thank you okay.